Squeak. Echo, you want to squeak it for the video? No? Okay. All right, what's up, guys? We're back. Uh, Friday Fitness. There it is. So, um, what we got going on today, we've got a nice kind of long grinder of a workout. Uh, before that, we've got some pulling strength work, and then we have a little bit of upper body mobility to finish things up. So, what we got to start? Warm up. Four minutes. You are going to do five prone eyes, Ys, and Ts. You are then going to do five prone swimmers, and then you're going to do five push-ups with a pull through at the top each time. So, for the prone eyes, Ys, Ts, that's going to be laying down on the ground. Chest stays all the way down. Face stays on the ground as well. Going to start with the eye. Five reps. Arms stay straight the whole time. Forehead should stay on the ground. Then I'm going to move out to my Ys, and then out to my Ts. When you're done there, you're going to do five prone swimmers. So that's going to be hands up overhead. I'm going to keep my elbows and my hands tucked in close to my body and then all the way down to my knees and then all the way back up is one. I'm going to go through five. And then lastly, you're going to do five push ups with a pull through. So you can do this from your knees or from your toes, but you're going to do a full range of motion push up, chest to deck, back up, and then you're going to pop your hips up and you're going to reach your head for your toes. Stretch out your shoulders a little bit, and then come back down for your next rep. Same thing. You're gonna go through that for four minutes. When you're done, you're gonna do two rounds. You're gonna do five karate chop stretches on each side, followed by five tempo push-ups. So just nice and slow push-ups. For the karate chops, all we're gonna do is you're gonna reach across the body, sink in for about two seconds, and then switch to the other side. Same thing, and we're just looking to stretch out the lats and the upper body a little bit. So five on each side. After that, you've got five slow push-ups. Again, perfect range of motion, good plank positions, elbows tucked in, chest all the way down. We're just gonna go nice and slow. So just as slow as you'd like. We'll leave it up to, uh, up to the imagination. So that's your strength work today, or sorry, that's your warm up. After that, your strength work is gonna be a 10 minute EMOM of a pulling exercise. So. You have a couple variations. Um, one, if you have access to a pull-up bar or if you're comfortable doing door pull-ups, you are more than welcome to do a 10 minute EMOM of one to five strict pull-ups. So perfect range of motion. Again, you can assist if needed. So you can do foot assisted. So if you have access to uh, a squat rack, a pull-up bar or a door, you can do foot assisted if need be. So again, for me, if I were to do these, I could have my leg off to the side here and I could press a little bit through this leg to provide me a little bit of assistance so I can still go through that full range of motion. <clears throat> Just using my leg as little as I need to, obviously. Your other option, so a couple options here. You have bent over rows for 10 reps, so you can do five on each side. I would uh, maybe not do those, only because we've done a good number of them. So the other option is going to be some towel rows. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, you can do it with one or two, uh, so you can do it with a barbell or you can do it with a kettlebell. But the theory is that you're going to be using an odd grip. So I'm going to take like a dish towel. I'm going to loop it through my object. And then I'm going to hold here. And I'm going to row from this position. And what I'm really doing is allowing myself a much different range of motion than I'm used to. And I'm engaging a lot more muscles in my forearms. So again, you can do that with a kettlebell. You'll do five reps on each side. Or you can do it with a barbell. If you have a barbell, you'll just grab two towels, lap them around lap them around, and I could do my rows this way. So again, I won't get a barbell out, but you kind of get the idea. It's the same thing as with the kettlebell or with the dumbbell. So again, it's a great variation. It's good for working on your rope climb, and it's just a good uh, you know, variety for the rowing exercise. And you're gonna do a 10 minute EMOM with five on each side, or you know, five-ish, depending on, again, your weight. So if it's super heavy, you can go down a little. If it's super light, you can keep it around five. So. That's going to be your strength work. Uh, after that, our conditioning for the day. So it's four rounds for time. You're going to do 12 power snatches. You're going to do 24 straight-legged sit-ups. And then you're going to do 36 wall ball shots or goblet thrusters. So the stimulus for this workout, again, it's going to be a little bit of a longer one. It's probably going to be 12 plus minutes if I had to guess at least. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and push the two heart rate elements. So we're going to try and push through the power snatches and the wall balls in big sets, getting them done as fast as possible. And then you're gonna try and recover and move nice and steady through your sit-ups. So the actual movements themselves, power snatches, 
Our extra for this would be something around 115.75. So you wouldn't be able to do it unbroken, but you would be able to do it in no more than two sets. So you'd be able to do six, seven, eight reps in your first set, take a little break, and then go into your next set. Then I've got my straight leg sit-ups. <clears throat> so for the straight leg sit-up, it is exactly what it sounds like. Legs are straight, I'm gonna sit back, touch my chest gently, and now I'm gonna sit up and just touch my shins. Point here though, is that I wanna try and keep my upper body relatively isolated. So try not to use too much arm swinging and try not to do too much moving of the spine. So again, the chest stays relatively tall as I lay down and as I sit up. Uh, so that's your sit up. And then for your wall ball shots or your goblet thrusters, echo, it's enough. Um, so a couple options here. If you have a wall ball, awesome, go for it. Um, if you're gonna be doing thrusters, you'll do one object, so you'll use a kettlebell or a dumbbell, and you'll do 36 reps total between both arms. So you'll have one an object in one hand, you'll go through that full range of motion thruster. So again, feet outside the hips, toes turned out, and then I'm gonna try and keep my chest up and my elbow up as I sit down all the way below parallel. And then I'm gonna stand up hard and try and use that energy out of the squat to help assist me overhead. I just punched the ceiling, it didn't feel very good. Um, so, and you can alternate arms whenever you like, as long as the work is split evenly. So again, as long as the work is 18 reps on each arm, you can change arms whenever you feel like it. So now for the last, first movement, last movement, uh, your power snatch. So for these, they shouldn't be that heavy, but they should be moderate. So again, you should be able to catch relatively high. So I should be able to catch my power snatch here every time. And it should be nice and, uh, you know, a steady weight that I can move confidently. But as you move it for a couple reps, it should start to get challenging. So <clears throat> a couple of drills that we're looking for just to warm up your power snatch a little bit. I would go through this complex with an empty barbell, let's say two or three times. So again, reminder, snatch grip. My hands should be wide enough that when I move my knees, my barbell doesn't go anywhere when I've got nice active shoulders. So for the power snatch, what we're going to do is we're going to work on resetting for the purposes of this workout. So what's gonna happen is from the hip crease, I'm going to do a high pull, and I'm gonna immediately reset to the hang position. So what I mean by that is from here, I'm going to dip, elbows up nice and high, and then I'm gonna immediately skip through my hip to the hang position so that I can work on that reset for the workout. From here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna high pull, and then immediately reset down to the low position, to the low hang position. So again, just to reiterate, from here, I'm gonna go elbows up, bar at my bra line, right to my reset. Then find my hip, elbows up, right to my reset. So I'm working on smoothly going from a high pole position back down to a hang, and then from a high pole position, right back down to the mid chain. And then you're gonna do that same drill, but we're gonna add the turnover. So you're gonna do the same exact drill, but you're gonna go a power snatch, from the hip crease, so from right here, I'm gonna do a power snatch. I'm gonna stand all the way up, question mark, yes. And then I'm gonna immediately reset to the hang, power snatch, and then I'm gonna immediately reset down to the mid chain. So you can do that again a couple times through with just an empty barbell. A couple things to keep in mind is again, when I come from overhead or when I come from the hang position, when that barbell touches my hip, chest is tall. And that's what has to happen in order for me to reset to that next position comfortably. So again, when that barbell comes from the high pole, it touches my hip. And when it does, that's my thought process to send my hips back so I'm ready for that next rep. Because again, my next rep is gonna come from my hamstrings. So <clears throat> that's your workout for the day. Four rounds for time, 12, 24, 36. After that, your accessory work is gonna be three rounds. You're gonna do 10 reverse flies with light objects. So again, I'm gonna hinge over. I'm gonna have you know five pound plates, a bottle of wine, water, something like that in my hand. I'm gonna do 10 reps. And on my 10th rep, I'm gonna hold this position for 10 seconds. Then for my next exercise, we're gonna do 10 hip thrusts with a 10 second hold on the final rep. So same exact format. So I'm gonna come down to the ground here, put my shoulders, my upper back, on the edge of a soft object. From there, heavy object goes in my lap, feet are on my squat stance. I'm gonna come down to a 90 degree hip, 
Then I'm going to squeeze my butt all the way to full extension, and I'm gonna cycle through 10 reps. On my final 10th rep, I'm gonna hold for 10, nine, all the way down to one, keeping a nice active belly and nice active butt cheeks the whole time. So that's your accessory work, three times through. When you're done there, we have just a little bit of mobility. So for the mobility today, you've got an elevated puppy dog pose. So again, hands on an object, head sinks through, just looking to stretch out the upper body in a little bit. So get the lats, get the upper back stretched out. Gonna hold for two minutes there. Then I'm gonna do a doorway stretch. So for the doorway stretch, um, I'll them over here. So for the doorway stretch, this is a stretch for the bicep to the chest. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into a, a doorway where it gets its name. You're gonna have your arm at 90 degrees here and here. And all I'm gonna do is take a step through and then reach with my chest and allow this pec to really get kind of pulled open behind me. And if I need to, I can turn away a little bit to intensify that stretch. So again, chest comes through and then turn my torso and my head away to really emphasize stretching out that upper body. You're gonna do that for one minute on each side. So that's your training for Friday. Enjoy guys, kick off the weekend the right way. As always, tag us, Ford Zeus, Palestine Ithaca, CrossFit Queens, and we will see you guys back tomorrow for Saturday's training.